Welcome to Texas Cattle Trails. I'm your host, Wayne Ludwig, author of The Old Chisholm Trail, From Cow Path to Tourist Stop, published by Texas A&M University Press. Since the pandemic forced cancellation of in-person events, such as historic association meetings and book signings, I decided to record a presentation and make it available in video format. And if this goes well, and if there's interest out there, then then uh, I might record others in the near future. We'll just wait and see how this goes. Now, the story of the Chisholm Trail is a big story. It is way too big to cover in one presentation. So I decided to start with maps. Uh, this is the first of a two-part series, Cartography and the Chisholm Trail. Now, before we get started, some folks will say, well, the uh, Emporia News or some other newspaper used the term Chisholm Trail in a newspaper article during the 1870s and 1880s. So the newspaper said it's the Chisholm Trail, so therefore it's the Chisholm Trail, and I don't want to talk about it. Um, but the problem with that is that the Emporia News and other newspapers during that same period of the 1870s and 1880s also used the term Texas Cattle Trail to describe that same trail during that same historical period of the 1870s and 1880s. So newspapers are inconsistent. We can't just pick one story that we happen to like and ignore everything else. Uh, we have the same issues with old trail driver accounts as they began to tell their stories during the early 20th century. Uh, they told of life on the trail and uh, their stories often conflicted when it comes to the subject of the uh, name and route of the Chisholm Trail. One said one thing, one said another. So those are all inconsistent. We can't count on them. On the other hand, maps provide a historical snapshot of an area. The maps don't change. So with that, uh, we'll get started in cartography and the Chisholm Trail. I hope you enjoy it. We'll compare modern Chisholm Trail maps with maps from the trail's historic period of use and let's see what story they tell. Thanks for watching. Now, this Chisholm Trail map is from Texas Historical Commission. And now let's take a closer look. Uh, this map shows the origin of the main route of the Chisholm Trail down at San Antonio, with the trail leading past Austin, Waco, Fort Worth, across the Red River at Red River Station, uh, up generally along the present route of U.S. Highway 81 through Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma was not a state during the cattle driving period. It was known back then as Indian Territory. Uh, and then into Kansas and to the original destination of Abilene, Kansas. Later, as railroads continued to expand and new, uh, new cattle markets became available, the trail branched out to these new cattle markets. Uh, then let's look down here at the shaded portion down in South Texas. I like the way this map indicates how, how herds that were gathered over thousands of square miles down in South Texas just naturally funneled into a main route wherever it made sense to do so. And they could pick up supplies at any of these, any of these towns along the way. Now, this is a National Park Service map from a recent project to designate these two trails as part of the National Historic Trail System. Uh, let's look at the trail on the left. Uh, we're not too concerned about that one today. This is the Western Trail that led, uh, that led to Fort Dodge. Uh, we'll talk about that one more in, in, later or in another session. Uh, let's look at the trail on the right. This is mapped by the Park Service as the Chisholm Trail from the same origin point of San Antonio up the same route that we just discussed, across the Red River at Red River Station, uh, up the present route of Highway 81 through Oklahoma and to the original destination of Abilene, Kansas. Now, this 1933 map was done by the Oklahoma State Highway Commission. And this was done as a result of uh, House Bill 149, which required the Highway Commission to locate and map the two main cattle trails that led across the state. Now, one of these trails was specified in the bill language as the Texas Cattle Trail that led across the western part of the state to Fort Dodge. 
this is the other trail. Uh, this one was specified in the bill language as the Chisholm Trail that entered the state in Jefferson County. Okay, let's look at the image on the left, uh, and these are details from the map. Uh, and uh, let's look down here at the bottom part of the of the map detail. Uh, this is the trail where it entered the state of Oklahoma or Indian Territory back then. Uh, Red River Station is located south of the Red River, right about here. Uh, if we look to the west of the trail route, we see Highway 81. And now none of these towns along Highway 81 existed during the trail driving days. Uh, here is Ryan, Oklahoma, right about here. Uh, Addington, Oklahoma is located right about there. Monument Hill, which was a landmark along the cattle trail, was located east of Addington, right about there. And then let's jump on up to the Washita River at the top of the detail, and we find uh, Chickasha, Oklahoma, and uh, then the trail crossing the, crossing, crossing the Washita River downstream from Chickasha. And let's look at the image on the right. We have the uh, uh, map citation. And down at the bottom of, of this detail, we see the Cimarron River. Uh, toward the top, we see the Salt Fork. And then right in the middle, we see Enid, Oklahoma, right along the trail route. Now, the reason I chose these uh, three maps to include in this presentation as examples uh, is because we know the source for these maps. These maps include a citation. Uh, one is from Texas Historical Commission, one is from uh, National Park Service, and this one from the Oklahoma State Highway Commission. Most of the modern maps that we find on the uh, internet today do not include a citation, so we have to be real careful. Uh, we, Unless we can uh, connect a particular map with a specific book or article, then we don't know anything about uh, that map or who drew or who published the map. Uh, so those maps that we don't know anything about are really not worth much in terms of historical research. These most likely represent someone's uh, perception of what they think the Chisholm Trail should be. So we have to be real careful out there when it comes to uh, modern Chisholm Trail maps, especially if they don't have a citation. If we look at uh, Chisholm Trail articles at places like the Handbook of Texas Online, uh, look at the bibliography for these articles. Uh, the bibliography tells us the sources for the material found in the book or the article. Uh, now, these sources listed on this slide uh, are not the only sources that you'll find listed, but these are the sources that you'll find uh, maybe more frequently than others uh, in support of uh, Chisholm Trail stories. If we look at the reference section for the National Park Service's recent National Historic Trails Project, we find the sources that we just mentioned listed, along with these other sources that are listed here. Uh, now, collectively, these sources are typically cited to support the modern Chisholm Trail historical narrative and the modern Chisholm Trail maps. In the feasibility study, they're listed to support the uh, Western Trail narrative and the Chisholm Trail narrative that's found in the National Park Service feasibility study. Now, if we look at the sources, the first one listed there, uh, McCoy's 1874 book, is the only one published during the trail's actual historic period of use. The rest of these were published decades after the fact during the 20th century. And as such, these are secondary sources. Uh, these are, by definition, removed from the uh, uh, period of the event and also, by definition, secondary sources are subject to opinion, they're subject to uh, interpretation, uh, and they're subject to outside influences. So keep this in mind uh, when you uh, consider secondary sources. Here's a question. Where would we look to find information about a road or a street in Fort Worth during the 1920s? Now, you can substitute any other location for Fort Worth, but the process will be the same. It's been 100 years, so modern maps would not do us much good. Even maps from the 1950s contain 30 years worth of changes. It's best to start uh, by looking for documents from the relevant historical period. In this case, maps from the 1920s. 
So having said that, if we wanted to know about the Chisholm Trail during its historical period of use, then why would we depend on modern maps? Let's look at some maps from the trail's actual historical period of use, and let's see what story those maps tell. Now, this is a rare map. This map was found in storage at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And this is an 1881 U.S. Department of the Interior map uh, that was done as part of a report about the movement of livestock in the United States. And this report was for inclusion in the 10th Census of the United States. And this map is specific to movement of cattle in and around Texas. And you can see that I've drawn in the location of Red River Station there for reference, along with the arrows indicating uh, our interest in the trail on the right. Um, and then this map shows the main cattle trails that were in use at this particular time, 1881. And uh, let's zoom in and take a closer look at some of the details. All right, we've zoomed in on two trails and let's look first at the trail on the left. Uh, without going into all the historical details, uh, this trail was first used about 1874. Uh, after the cattle market opened at Dodge City in 1876, uh, this trail became the uh, main trail route used to drive herds from Texas to Dodge, Ogallala, and points beyond. Uh, now, the custom of the day was to use origin, destination, or some sort of a geographic reference to name roads or trails. Uh, so after 1876, this became the westernmost northbound trail in use. So it was called the Western Trail uh, and is designated as the Western Trail by the Interior Department on this map. Uh, we also see it designated the Fort Griffin Trail because it led past Fort Griffin. Uh, now some books will also refer to this trail as the Dodge City or Fort Dodge Trail because it led to Dodge. Um, regarding the trail name, uh, some folks, uh, say that this should be called the Great Western Trail. Uh, now, there, is no use, there are no references to the term Great Western Trail uh, that I'm aware of uh, during this trail's actual historic period of use. All the references to Great Western Trail came along years after this trail was closed. Uh, so uh, let's look at uh, the trail on the right. Uh, after 1876, the trail on the right became the easternmost northbound trail in use and became called the Eastern Trail and is designated as the Eastern Trail here by the Interior Department. And we see that down here at the lower part of the map. Uh, this trail, um, some folks today will try to confuse the issue, you know, and make it more complicated than it really was. Uh, one was the westernmost trail, one was the easternmost trail, western trail, eastern trail. Uh, I think they try to confuse the issue to try to discredit the eastern trail as a legitimate trail name because some promoters have said, this is Texas, we can't call it the eastern trail. That sounds like something out of New York. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that this is the only known map uh, that shows this trail past Red River Station and has provenance to the trail driving period. This is an 1881 map. Uh, and on this map, the Interior Department designated this as the Eastern Trail, and it designated the trail on the left as the Western Trail, not the Great Western Trail. All right, we have reviewed the only known map of Texas with provenance to the trail driving period that shows the cattle trail through Texas and past Red River Station. So since there are no other maps to review, uh, let's move on up into Indian Territory. The uh, General Land Office in 1870 issued contracts to survey Indian Territory for the first time. Now these surveys began shortly after the contracts were issued. The initial point was a few miles south of Fort Arbuckle. Uh, so with no other maps of Texas to review, let's move on up across the Red River into Indian Territory. All right, we are in Indian Territory and uh, we are uh, 
uh, moving along the Fort Sill and Texas Road. And this is another example of origin destination as road names or trail names. Uh, this, this is an 1871 General Land Office survey. This is an image from that survey plat. Uh, this is uh, uh, a few miles northwest of Red River Station and a few miles southeast of the present site of Ryan, Oklahoma. Now, 1871 was a peak year for uh, trail drives. There were more herds on the trail this year than any other year uh, during the entire post-Civil War trail driving period. Uh, so keep that in mind as we look at these surveys and maps. Uh, as we move uh, northwest along the trail, we see uh, the level of detail uh, that the surveyors indicated on these survey plats. Uh, they show the uh, uh, cattle trail leaving the main route here uh, in this network of paths that converged into a main trail route. And this main trail route led on to the north toward Monument Hill, which was a landmark along the trail. Uh, Monument Hill is located about three miles east of the present site of Addington, Oklahoma. And uh, you can drive to Monument Hill today and go to the top of Monument Hill and look out over the old trail, uh, over the old trail route. Uh, and that's pretty interesting to do if you're ever up that way. Uh, remember section one, section two, section 11 and section 12 and we'll see those referenced on another document coming up and before we leave note that the surveyors designated this trail as the abilene cattle trail now, this is a page from the survey field notes uh, this relates to the survey we just reviewed a few miles northwest of red river station and a few miles southeast of the present site of Ryan, Oklahoma. The official designation is Township 7 South, Range 7 West. Uh, and the field notes were the surveyor's own handwritten notes uh, regarding uh, their survey work. And they recorded things such as distances, uh, physical features such as rivers, creeks, roads, and cattle trails. Uh, so let's look down. This is the general description section of the, of the notes and look at the last sentence and the surveyor notes that the Abilene cattle trail passes through sections 1, 2, 11, and 12, just as we saw uh, on the uh, survey plat that we reviewed previously. Now we do have uh, a few examples of trail driver diaries that provide us a glimpse of life on the trail. Uh, and maybe managing a herd on the trail and things of that nature. Uh, the uh, survey field notes are probably the best primary documents that we have related to the cattle trail itself. Uh, the surveyors were not distracted trying to keep a herd on trail. Their job was to uh, survey the township, uh, make note of physical features, distances, uh, things like that. Uh, and, th and their work included locating and measuring things such as roads and cattle trails. Uh, so this provides us a specific name designation reference along with a specific uh, location in the surveyor's own handwriting. And this is another example of what we find in survey field notes. Uh, this is from Township 12 North, Range 5 West, and this is near the present site of Yukon, Oklahoma. Uh, and again, this is the general description of the uh, notes, and let's look down at the last sentence. Uh, right down here. And uh, we see the surveyor notes, the uh, Abilene Cattle Trail enters in Section 31, passes north through the township, and leaves in Section 5. Uh, so again, we see specific uh, written references to both the trail name and a specific geographic location. Uh, and uh, remember, these are just a couple of examples of what we find in these surveys. There are 47 township plats uh, along this trail route, which is generally along the route of, of the present route of U.S. Highway 81, uh, from the Red River all the way north to the southern line of Kansas. Uh, out of these uh, 47 township plats, 
surveyors noted the Abilene Trail or Abilene Cattle Trail as the trail name in 35 of these plats. Uh, they did not note the Chisholm Trail as a trail name for this trail route anywhere along this trail. The surveys were done under the public land survey system. Uh, the PLSS has been the primary standard legal definition of property in most of the United States since it was adopted in about 1785. The exceptions include original 13 states, uh, states like Texas that were originally surveyed under Spanish land grants, uh, and a few areas that were once under the ownership of France. These were all uh, surveyed using different methods. Now, a survey is a legal document. So these surveys are therefore the original legal documents that define these cattle trails through Oklahoma. Well, let's look at a few map examples. This is from a map of the Chickasaw country. This is an 1872 map done by the U.S. Army. And these maps are too large to uh, include on a presentation slide uh, and see any details, so we crop and zoom. And uh, this shows the cattle trail where it crossed the Washita River. And uh, this is just downstream from the present site of Chickasha, Oklahoma, which is located up in this area. And we see the cattle trail located and designated as the Abilene Cattle Trail. And uh, again, uh, up at the top of this detail, we see another example of use of uh, origin and destination as road names or trail names. And we see the Fort Cobb and uh, Shawnee Town Road. This detail is from an 1887 map of uh, Indian Territory uh, by the U.S. Department of the Interior. And it shows the trail in the vicinity of Enid, Oklahoma, as the Abilene Cattle Trail and Stage Road. And this trail that takes off to the northeast is another example of origin destination for road and trail names. And uh, it is the road to Arkansas City. This leads to Arkansas City, Kansas. Uh, and again, this is the vicinity of Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, the U.S. Department of the Interior published a series of these maps during the 1870s and 1880s. And they're all consistent in the location of the cattle trail and the name designation used for the cattle trail. Uh, and in this case, the Abilene Cattle Trail. And this is a detail from New Railroad and Sectional Map of Kansas. This is an 1871 map. Uh, this map is not a general land office or interior department map, uh, but we can tell that it was based on surveys, based on the uh, grid lines that we see here uh, visible in the map. These are the township and section lines. So we know this was based on surveys and this map was entered into Congress. And uh, we look at the top and I've circled Abilene, the original destination for reference. And uh, we see Texas Cattle Trail indicated here at the green arrows. And this is the term used on this map uh, for the trail leading to all existing railheads in Kansas at this particular time. Uh, Texas Cattle Trail was one of several terms used to describe this trail. Uh, it appeared frequently in newspapers during this period. And in fact, uh, Texas Cattle Trail appeared a little more frequently than the term Chisholm Trail during this particular period. And this is a general land office survey map of Marion County, Kansas from 1876. Uh, and we see someone has drawn in the present site of Gossel as reference. And if we look in the red circle, uh, it's blurry, but we can make it out. Uh, we see the Abilene Cattle Trail as, as the uh, designation for the cattle trail. Now we just saw this trail designated as the Texas Cattle Trail on the railroad and sectional map on the previous slide. But remember, that map is not a general land office or an interior department map. Uh, we have seen that the general land office and the interior department are both consistent in using the designation Abilene Trail or Abilene Cattle Trail for this cattle trail throughout in Indian Territory and now in Kansas. 
And this is a list of maps published by government agencies uh, with provenance to the 1870s and 1880s. We have seen details from some of these maps uh, in the presentation so far, and these include the U.S. Army, General Land Office, and Department of the Interior. And what we have seen so far when we trace the trail shown on modern maps as the Chisholm Trail from San Antonio past Red River Station to Abilene, Kansas, when we trace that route on maps from the trail's actual historic period of use, we have not found the Chisholm Trail yet. Uh, Chisholm Trail name does not appear anywhere along this route that's designated on modern maps as the Chisholm Trail. This is a list of sources for the maps and surveys that we've seen so far in the presentation. And these documents are all publicly available if you know where to look. To summarize part one, modern maps show the Chisholm Trail from an origin of San Antonio, Texas, past Red River Station to Abilene, Kansas. When we look at uh, maps with provenance to the trail's actual historical period of use, the 1870s and 1880s, we see the Eastern Trail in Texas, we see the Abilene Cattle Trail in Indian Territory. We see the Abilene Cattle Trail in Kansas, and we see the Texas Cattle Trail in Kansas. We do not see the Chisholm Trail indicated anywhere along this route. So where is the Chisholm Trail? Uh, the modern maps tell us one thing, but uh, when we look on maps from the trail's historical period of use, uh, those maps tell us that that trail is really the Eastern Trail, the Abilene Trail, and the Texas Trail. They don't mention Chisholm Trail anywhere along that route. So where is the Chisholm Trail? Join us for part two. We'll see if we can find the Chisholm Trail. This is the book, The Old Chisholm Trail, from Cowpath to Tourist Stop, and this is a few places where it's available. I'm sure if you check around, you can find availability elsewhere as well. Uh, if you're interested in a signed copy, you can email me at texascattletrails at gmail.com. And that's all one word, texascattletrails at gmail.com. Um, if you'd like to submit questions or comments about the presentation, you can also send those to me at the same email address. And that is, once again, Texas Cattle Trails, all one word, Texas Cattle Trails at gmail.com. I also have a Facebook group, Texas Cattle Trails History Group. Uh, feel free to drop by and check it out. Um, I hope you enjoyed part one. Look forward to seeing you back for part two. Hope you'll join us for part two. Meanwhile, thanks, have a good day, and happy trails.